Right, I'm going to be taking my text out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse, chapter, verse 2 through 3. The title of my message tonight, it's kind of strange, is The Two Wills of the Lord. The Two Wills. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you, Father, right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, I ask you, Father, right now that your presence, Father, would begin to move in this place, Father. Lord, I cannot preach your word without you, Father. Lord, I cannot do anything without you, O oh God. And Father, I ask that you give me the words to say, Father. Help me to speak, Father. Help my speech, dear Heavenly Father. And Lord God, I ask you to anoint them to hear the word, Father. And let the word be planted deep within their heart, Father. Let it take root within their very souls, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, and we ask you this, Father, all in the name of Jesus. Verse, chapter 4, verse 2. For you know what commandment we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. I'm going to read that again. For this, for this is the will of God. For your life, for my life, even your sanctification. The two wills. There is two major wills that the Lord has for us. The first one is the ultimate will. The ultimate will. The second one is the personal will. God has an ultimate will for our lives and God has a personal will for our lives. But both of those wills work together. They do not work separate from each other. You can't have one without the other. But the problem, and the, the main thing, the Lord wants us to focus on the ultimate will. But our problem is, we look too much to the personal will. What is the personal will for our lives? Lord, what have you called me to do? Lord, who am I supposed to marry? Where am I supposed to live? God, what am I supposed to do for you? And when we don't arrive at that place in our time, we get discouraged. Sometimes even made depression may come in. Lord, I'm just not doing enough for you. The problem is we're focused on the personal will. And it is right to pray, Lord, who am I supposed to marry? Where am I supposed, what part of the ministry have you called me to do? That is the will. The Lord wants you to pray for those things, but the Lord does not want you to be focused on those things. He wants you to be focused on his ultimate will. And that ultimate will, I just read it here. For this is the will of God for your lives, even your sanctification. Once you get in line with his ultimate will, everything else comes into line. Once you come into the ultimate will of God, which is being more like Christ, everything else falls into line. But it's the tendency of the flesh to try to make things happen, to try to push our way into ministry, to try to find the, the wife that God has wants us to have or the husband that God wants to have outside of God's timing. It's all about timing with the Lord. The Lord may have called us to preach, may have called us to teach the fivefold ministry, uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. The Lord may call us into those things, but those things are not, we're not to set our hearts upon those things and to seek those things. We're not to look upon those things. A lot of time we feel within ourselves, if I'm, I'm not, well, let, me, let me say it this way. If I can just do something, I will feel, we might not say this, but we feel this. If I can just do something or be placed in a certain position, I will feel more equipped. Or more, let me say it this way, that's the wrong word. More fulfilled. If I can just be a part of something, I'll be more fulfilled. 
We might not come out and say that, but it's in our heart. We want to do something. We want to be a part of something. That is the natural heart of man. The flesh wants to do something. That is the personal will. The flesh wants to to find the wife. The flesh wants to to find the husband. The flesh wants to, to, to find this job, to find that job. Because a lot of times when we don't get what we want, we get very discouraged. And the Lord just holds everything back. And he, he, he brings you to the place to where you can't achieve anything within yourself. He brings you to the place to where you can't do anything within yourself. To where sometimes in the morning it's hard to get out of bed. I remember one time I was, I was at the church. It was a few years ago. And at 4 o'clock every day they would have prayer time at the church. And I'd... I'd go into the church and pray, and Lord, what is your will for me? What have you called me to do? Deep down, I knew what the Lord's called me to do, but I, I just wasn't doing it, and I wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied. I wanted to be doing something for the Lord. And I was sitting praying, and it was just like a light bulb went off. The Holy Spirit just moved upon me. He said, right now, if your faith is in me and what I did at the cross, you're doing my will. You're in the will of God right now. It says, for this is, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. We need to get our eyes off our personal will, what he has called us to do or be or where he wants us to go. And Father, I place my faith in your finished work. I keep my faith in the cross. I stay there, plant it in the cross. And when you do that, You are doing the will of the Lord. But it's the flesh that wants to come in. It's the flesh that disguises itself as the Spirit of God. It's the flesh that wants to to do something to try to achieve what we feel like the Lord has placed upon our hearts. But a lot of time, let me say this, the Holy Spirit, there's a fine line here, but the Holy Spirit never makes you feel like you got to do something. Now, hold off. I know that doesn't make sense, but the Holy Spirit... Deep down, it's usually, a lot of the times, it's usually the flesh that makes you feel like you got to do something. The Holy Spirit comes in and He speaks softly to your heart. Keep your faith planted in my finished work. Don't worry about those other things. Keep your faith planted in my finished work. And that's why at times the Lord has to, that's why at times we experience trials and tribulations that come our way. And we wonder, God, what's going on? I can't handle this no more, Lord. It's the Lord trying to cut away that area in our life that we are yielding to, that we are trusting in. And that area area could look very religious. It could have a lot of Christian works around it. Or it could just be we want our own desires and we want to do what we want to do. But at the same time, thinking we're doing what God wants us to do. But the Lord will bring us through Trials and tribulations. But through that trial and tribulation, I used to say it this way. Satan comes in. Like when I first got saved, the attacks would come against me. And I would feel, you know, what's going on? But it would hit me. This is Satan attacking. I used to say Satan would come in the back door. And like you don't realize it's Satan. And later on, whoa, it's, it's Satan attacking me. But as you grow in Christ, it becomes more natural that you know it is Satan coming against you. But I had to learn that every single attack and that comes against us is against our faith. And I know we hear this. I've heard it over and over again. But I never get tired of hearing it and I never get tired of preaching it. Every single attack, no matter what it is, that comes against you and me is to remove our faith From what Christ did upon the cross to on what we have to do to get out of the to get out of that attack. Every single attack. When Satan attacks, the first response of the flesh is, "What do I got to do? What do I have to do?" The Bible says, "Fight the good fight of faith." Fight the good fight of faith. That's just simple. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I'm placing my faith 
I'm holding firm to the finished work. I'm keeping it there. And when you do that, as you're keeping your faith in the finished work, the Lord sends more stuff your way. And we think, well, Satan's really beating me up now. When it's actually the Lord trying to come in to remove more self out the way. But I keep my faith placed, anchored in the finished work. He comes in that trial, that tribulation, but as we keep our faith placed in the finished work, the Lord comes in, cuts flesh off, moves the flesh out the way, puts spirit in. Keep my faith. The Lord comes in, cuts the flesh off, moves it out the way, puts the spirit in. And a lot of times when we feel that the movement of the spirit, we feel like we're on cloud nine and we think, well, this is it. I have it now. Then around the road, down the road, boom, something else happens. And each time you have to recognize, and even through the good times, because that's where it gets dangerous, even through the good times, our faith can slack away. Every moment of the day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, I'm keeping my faith placed in His finished work. And that is the ultimate, mouth is going dry, that is the ultimate will of God. And everything else, your calling, if you're called to the ministry, if you're called to preach, teach, evangelize, everything is going to come about because he's going he's to begin to develop within your heart what he's called you to do. He's going to begin to place the tools within your heart that he's called to do. That you see within yourself, there's no way that I'm able to do that. But as you continue your faith in Christ Jesus, and lay that aside for right now, but as you continue your faith in Christ Jesus, he begins to place those tools in you, and you will find yourself in the position that he's called you to do. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus walks by the sea and he sees uh, Peter and, who was it, Peter and James? I can't remember who it was. He walks by and he sees them casting the net into the, the lake. And he said, he told him, he said, come follow after me. It's one of my favorite scriptures. He said, come follow after me. Come follow after me and I will make, that word make, I will make you to become fishers of men. I will make you. You don't have to worry about nothing. It comes down to that point. You don't have to worry about nothing. But even within ourselves, we can't force ourselves not to worry because it's a natural part of the human heart that wants to worry. So what do you do with that? You take it to the cross. And the Lord gives you this supernatural power not to worry. So we hear hear people say, don't worry, don't worry. How? How? By understanding that worry was defeated at the cross. You know, worry is a sin. Worrying is a sin. And all sin was defeated at the cross over 2,000 years ago. So when I come to the Father, I say, Father, I have a problem with worrying. I have a problem with doubt. Those things are sin because it's a lack of faith. But you're not called to fight against those things. You're not called to say, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to doubt. You're going to end up failing miserably. You're going to find yourself in a deep depression worrying and doubting. But when you see the problem, see the Lord, what he does as you continue your faith, he begins to show you areas in your your life that you're slack on. He'll begin to pull this out, worry, doubt. Instead of trying to get under, instead of trying to fight that off because you know it's a, a wrong thing to do, it's a wrong attitude to have is to worry and doubt. Father, I come to you right now. This is in my heart. But within myself, I am not able to take it out. But over 2,000 years ago, you defeated this problem. And I'm keeping my faith placed in that finished work. So he, they, he said, come after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. Come after me. When I think of that, I think of a little child. You ever probably got on your parents' feet when you were little 
you stepped on their feet, and you hugged them, you placed your head down, and you just stayed right there and loved on them. That's what Jesus wants you to do with him. He wants you to go. He wants you to step on his feet, put your head down, shut your eyes, and hang on. Lord, but you're not moving quick enough. Walk me across the living room. So what happens? We jump off the feet and we try to go across the living room within our, by ourselves. And Jesus said, no, come back here, come back here. Well, Lord, you're not moving fast enough for me. No, you keep placed on his feet. You keep your arms wrapped around him. You put your head down and you hang on tight. You keep your faith placed tight in the finished work. You don't worry about moving to the left and you don't worry about moving to the right. You ever got confused over things? Certain, certain decisions came in your life and you were, you were clouded with confusion? You ever seen the cartoon with the devil here and the angel here? And you're like, oh, I've got to decide this. You know what you do? Flick. Flick. Father, I'm keeping my faith in your finished work. I press through all the confusion. I press, I, I throw that decision away and I throw this decision away. But to the flesh, it seems like we have to make a decision right now because there's so much coming against us. We have to make one of these, these decisions. No, the Lord doesn't work that way. The Lord just wants you to stand firm. And that's where the fight of faith comes in. I'm keeping my faith in your finished work. I'm not going to jump off your feet. I'm going to press in to the cross and keep my faith there. And then when, when your faith is placed there, that, you ever experienced that ripping deep within? You ever went to bed at night and it just feels like you're just being ripped on the inside? And you're, you're fighting the faith. You're placing your faith in the finished work. And you're just going through all this struggle on the inside? Who's been there? Huh? That struggle, I remember I used to toss and turn in the bed. After I heard this message of the cross and started applying my faith in the cross, it just didn't make sense, but I'd keep fighting it. I'd keep placing my faith in there. I'd keep looking to the cross and just, I couldn't operate right. You know what I mean? It's like I, my, I couldn't function right because the Lord was bringing me to a place to where I could not do anything within myself. The Bible says in Romans, yield your members unto righteousness he wants to have control of everything your eyes your ears what you what you see what you listen to where you walk where you go and that'll take about that'll happen as you press into the finished work and as the lord comes in and cuts off flesh but as you keep your faith in that finished work and you keep your feet placed on his feet you keep your head down you keep your arms around him and then pretty soon as you, he, you begin to grow spiritually, he'll step a couple steps. He'll move you a little bit in your personal will. That's the personal. Him walking is what he's called you to do or where he's called you to go. That is his personal will for you. He'll walk you a little bit. Then, you, oh, I'm glad I'm here and... I'm doing something for the Lord. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But make sure, here comes the test, make sure you stay on his feet. Make sure you stay held. Make sure you stay holding on to the Lord. Because the moment he carries us into a certain place, it's very easy for the flesh. Look what I just did. Look what I just did. Or now I got it, Lord. Those, those feelings and those thoughts are within the heart of man. We naturally do those things. And sometimes the Lord has to check us. Brother Bob told me one time, said, the Holy Spirit will send a, a Holy Spirit examination through you. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? What is your faith in? Is your faith in your own ability, your own strength, your own willpower? Is your in, or is your faith in over 2,000 years ago, Jesus has taken care of everything. The Bible says, God has given us all things, all things that pertain to life, to life, everything that we need. I know the word there, life, it, it's talking about the life in Christ, but I believe it also means that just the things that we need here in this world, 
God has given us all things that pertain to life in godliness. Everything that we need that pertains to godliness, he has given it to us through the finished work. Through the finished work. You know, there's, there's a lot of students that are, that are new here. Each year I see a whole group of students come here. I work at the dorms and I'm always seeing new students. And I just watch them. I just watch y'all because I can tell when y'all start going through the trials and the tribulation. Especially when you come here to the Bible college. All of a sudden, boom, the test hits. And some of y'all just... That is the Lord orchestrating that. We, it is Satan trying to do you harm, but at the same time, the Lord is orchestrating that because he's wanting to cut off the flesh. But through your trial, through your tribulation, no matter what it is, deep down, deep down on the inside, and it's a fight I keep my faith planted knowing that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus has taken care of this. And remember this, faith, y'all let me know when I'm getting close to my time because I'll keep going. Faith, faith is not a feeling. We go by feelings too much. Well, I feel close to the Lord today and the next day all this happens, well, I must be out of the will of God. No, it's a fight of faith. Through that, through when I don't feel the Lord, through the times when all hell is breaking loose. Father, right now, because my faith is in your cross, no matter what's happening, I am in your will. I am doing the will of God. I'm not doing the will of God just because, even though it is the will of God to do this, I'm not doing the will of God just because I read my scriptures so many times a day. I'm not doing the will of God just because I pray so much a day. Even though those things are the will of God, let's put them in the category of the personal will of God. Those things are a result of the ultimate will of God. It's keeping your faith in Christ, in Him crucified. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit begins to do a work within your heart and life. And all those other things else become a natural lifestyle. A natural lifestyle that is produced by the Holy Spirit Something that we are not able to do within ourselves. After you got the mess of the cross, I know this happened to me a lot. <sighs> just trying to relax while I told, I think I told him this. Just trying to, you ever just trying to sit on your couch? You're just sitting back on your couch. You just want to watch TV or a movie and all of a sudden, God, I, I better be reading my Bible. And don't get me wrong, it is good to read your Bible, but a lot of times... Satan will come in, and the flesh will come in and say, well, you're not reading your Bible enough. You're not praying enough. You're not doing these things enough. And you know what I tell Satan? (laughs) Satan, what does the Word of God say? Jesus said, To follow after me, you must deny yourself and take up the cross daily. Father, I'm sitting right here watching TV, but my faith is in your finished work and I'm in your will. I am in Christ Jesus. I don't have to do something to be in Christ Jesus. Paul said in in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Mike's favorite verse, one of it, one of his favorite verses is, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but yet not I, but it's Christ that liveth in me. In the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And that's what I tell Satan. Satan, I'm not required to do anything but rest in Jesus. Rest in Jesus. I'm not required to do anything. But that is a fight of faith because the flesh is going to scream. The flesh is always going to make you feel like that you have to be doing something. And that's where the fight of faith comes in. But the more you fight the faith, the more you keep your faith in the finished work, that flesh begins to get ripped out. And that's where all the trials and tribulations you go through is. Is whenever you're going, when you're keeping your faith and the flesh is being ripped out. And you've got to understand at that point, this is why I'm going through this trial and tribulation. Is so the flesh can be ripped out. And the, but the more you keep anchoring in to the finished work, pretty soon, 
the Holy Spirit comes in, and in time, precept upon precept, line upon line, here or there, and whatever the rest. <laughs> you know, it, the Lord begins to do a work in you, and you begin to find yourself, man, I just have this overwhelming desire right now just to read the Bible. It's not a work. It's not a law. It's something that the Lord is beginning to place in you because 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're fighting the faith. You're keeping your faith in there. And the Lord begins to place not only the desires, for he both, what's the, what's the scripture? He both the will and the to-do of his good pleasure. He has to put the will in us and he has to put the to-do in us because within ourselves we won't do anything. Proper rest always produces proper works. When you're properly in Christ, when you're keeping your faith in Christ, and he's cutting out all your desires, all your wants, all your flesh, all your uh, ambitions, he begins to put his in. And you be, it's, it becomes a natural thing now to live for the Lord. It becomes a natural thing to pick up the Word of God. It becomes a natural thing now to pray, to go to church. Instead of the struggle, well, am I making a law out of reading my Bible? Who goes through that? Who's hearing the message of the cross and they're just getting it and they're scared that they're going to make a law out of it if you pick up the Bible? Not everybody goes through that, but I went through it. I thought at a time that everybody goes through that, and they might. I don't know, but I know I went through it. But I know that no matter if I'm picking up the Bible or reading it or setting it down, as long as my faith is in what Christ did upon the cross, I am doing what the Bible tells me to do. And the more I read the Bible, the more that I see I have to keep looking to the finished work. When you first get the message of the cross, it's a, it's a mind thing i got to keep my faith in the cross. I see a cross all day long. I see a cross all day long. And that, that happened to me, but I kept looking and kept listening and understanding what all the terminology, like I heard over the Sun Life radio, I heard justification. Okay, what is that? Sanctification. It, I knew it was truth. It bore witness, but I didn't understand it. It wasn't until I kept listening and listening, started understanding the terminology, and then started, started to apply it to my heart. Started looking to the cross. But everything becomes a natural thing to do. To live for the Lord. We always say here at the ministry, we're not called to, to fight against sin. We're called to fight the good fight of faith. And that's to keep our faith off from ourself. Because the, that is the, the temptation, if there's any temptation... When Satan comes in and he tempts you to commit this act of sin and you feel that pull, do you know what the real temptation is? Is is to move your faith from the cross to overcome that temptation within yourself. But I kept my faith in the cross and I still fell. I still messed up. Keep your faith in the cross. Because the moment you mess up, what do I got to do to make up for what I just did? Keep your faith in the cross. You know, we repent of the sins, but there's, there's times that we sin while we're keeping our faith in the finished work. And the reason why we, we mess up, because there's still a lot of areas in our life that aren't right, so we always come short. But as we're keeping our faith in the finished work, there's times that we'll mess up and that we'll sin. But we don't, let me say this, we, there's sins that we commit that we don't realize that are sins. But as we keep our faith in the finished work, we might have just sinned and thought and not realized it. But because our faith is in the finished work, the blood is constantly covering. The blood is constantly covering. The personal will, the personal will and the ultimate will. We have to keep our focus on the ultimate will. And the personal will will come about singers and musicians come back (laughs) 
The Lord is wanting to bring us to a place of a complete surrenderance. Everything that we experience in this Christian life, no matter what it is, it's always, the, the Lord will use Satan at times, but it's always to bring us to a place of dependence on the finished work. Every single thing that we go through, if I keep my faith anchored, like I said before, I'm not going by feelings. I'm going on a fact that over 2,000 years ago, that right now that every problem that I'm going through was taken care of at the cross. And I press in to the finished work. And then the Holy Spirit, in time, not right away, but in time, process of time, little bit by little bit, He begins to do a work in us. And we begin to change little bit by little bit. Subtle, but it happens. We find ourselves with a new thought pattern. We find ourselves with new desires, with new motives. But my major point, stay anchored. Don't look to your good works. Don't look to, to just because I come to church or just because I do these certain things. Keep your faith pressed in. And the more you keep fighting the faith and you just hang on with everything you got, the more flesh gets pushed out the way, the more the Holy Spirit begins to do the work in you, and the more easy, the more easy it is to come to church, to read your Bible, to pray. It's not no longer a religious ceremony, but it's an easy thing to do because it is a part of you. Just like when you were in the world, it was easy to sin because it was a part of you. Now you're dead to that, and now you're in Christ, and he's doing a work in you. In time, process of time, doing the things that you're supposed to do will become natural. If this podcast has been a blessing to you and you would like to contribute to this ministry, Feel free to contact us at 1-800-288-8350 or you can go to our website at www.jsm.org. We love you. God bless you.